Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Six Man Radio Network, the first presentation of Only Six. And I have a very special guest joined for the very first time of this show, head coach of the Valley Patriots, Coach Tyler. And Coach Tyler, thank you very much for being our first guest of this show. This is going to be the first broadcast ever, but more importantly, congratulations on bringing home another gold ball to Turkey. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. Honored to, honor to be the first guest. It's a, it's a privilege of mine, and uh, I appreciate that. Well, Coach, we're honored to have you with us. And uh, you boys, they, they say that sports is uh, a lot about coming, overcoming adversity. And you guys went through a lot of adversity this weekend with the weather. And let's talk about how everything just kind of unfolded on, on the weekend and what it's like to have a, a, a game on Monday and have to prepare for a game this Saturday. Well, you know, they always say that you know, Texas high school football is the biggest thing ever and nothing can compare to it. But I guess Mother Nature Mother Nature can, uh, can throw a wrench in it, you know, uh, yeah, you know, on Friday morning we um, get up and the weather's bad. We try to move our game up in time and, and ended up ended up couldn't make the travel because the weather got too bad Friday afternoon and then uh, ended up rescheduling it for Monday afternoon and uh, then ended up having to, you know Monday afternoon the weather didn't get very didn't get much better through the weekend and uh, man we played in a on a field full of snow on Monday afternoon at three o'clock so it's kind of a it's kind of a it's a first that's a first for me for sure. Well, I know it's one of those things, you know, having doing that, that's something that, you know, growing up, man, I can't wait to play in the snow. And then you actually get to do it. It's like, nah, I want the sun and the, and the fair weather back out. Let's talk about the kids, how excited they were or about uh, getting that win on Monday afternoon. Yeah, I think they enjoyed it. You know, they, they uh, that's kind of one of the things you dream of, playing in mud and playing in snow. And uh, so they, they got to uh, – live out one of their dreams that probably they they, um, they grew up wanting to do. So that, that was a neat, it was neat for them. But it was sure cold sitting on those sidelines. I know that there's a lot of listeners out there that are new to the, the six-man nature of the game. I kind of introduce your team to everybody, Coach, who they are and, and what your team's about and, and how they've done through the season. Well, you know, um, we're, we're the Valley Patriots. Uh, we're up here in uh, we're a school. It's in the middle of Turkey and Kitty Clay, Texas, up here in the Texas Panhandle. It's uh, um, we've we've got pretty good proud, we got a proud tradition. You know, we made this is the fifteenth straight year in a row we've made the playoffs and I'm kinda of proud of that. Uh um we we played for state championships in oh four and oh five and, and lost those and um and uh we've had success of this is our third year in a row in the state quarterfinals. Uh it's our third consecutive year in a row making it to the state quarterfinals, so we're proud of that achievement as well. Um uh Good hard nosed kids, you know, kind of farm kids, and uh, they, they grow up wanting to play football here. Great tradition coming out of Turkey, Texas. Six man football. Let's talk about this Saturday's matchup. You're going to play at four o'clock at a uh, Amarillo Highlands up there in the Panhandle against Happy. Have you got a chance to look at, over the Happy Cowboys and see uh, what they bring to the table? Yeah, you know, we're familiar with Happy. We played actually Happy in week one. Um, and that team, you know, we won that game in week one. And I remember walking off the field that, that night. They're, they're kind of a younger group. They've only got one or two seniors on their roster. And I remember walking off the field there happy, early, you know, I think it was September the 1st or September the 7th, somewhere around there. And I and I thought, man, if these guys figure out that they're pretty good, they can they can uh, make a run. And I think they've done exactly that. You know, they've gotten better all year long. Um, I think they won about eight games in a row now into the playoffs. And uh, they're scoring points at a rapid pace. Uh so um, um, I think they're a lot better team than what we saw in week one. And uh, uh, but we are familiar with them, and we expect a good game. That's right. You said they scored a lot of points at a rapid pace. Their district matchup, they uh, defeated Paducah, the Dragons, 108-91. to And that's a basketball score. A lot of basketball scores don't even get that high. What do you guys do? I mean, without giving away any, you know, information, what's the key to slowing down a high-powered offense like that? Well, it's just being sound on defense. You know, they 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 wear they wear defense down. You know, they score a lot of points in the first half, but they just in the second half, it's almost impossible to to stop them. Um, we're we're gonna try to use a lot of depth. You know, play a lot of different kids, uh, and then try to be sound on defense. Have people taking away um, taking away stuff they like to do. That was Coach Tyler of the Valley Patriots right here on Just Six on the Six Man Radio Network. We'll be right back with some more coaches right after this. Welcome back to Just Six. Jeff Korean here on the Six Man Radio Network. I am joined by a very happy man. I'm not saying that because it's a clever thing to say, but the happy Cowboys head coach, Coach Keith. Coach Keith, welcome to the show. And you played in a pretty much a uh, 
snowballed this last weekend whenever you defeated the Lenore Grady Wildcats. Let's go ahead and recap that game. No, man, it was it was something else. You know, I mean, we, we were able to start off pretty fast and Grady fought back, you know, and, and made it a great ball game. And, you know, and it was a dog fight the whole time. I mean, that, that second half was, was something, uh, you know, as a, as a coach, kind of give you, kind of get you nervous. But it, you know, that's that's what these games are all about. It's all fun and and you know the competing and everything like that. You know, and then you know you, we told the kids for the game, you know, you'll never forget this game. You'll never forget this game, and that they're now they're not. I mean, that was they probably never get to play in conditions like that. You know, again. That's right. And as I recall, the, the final score was sixty nine sixty one. Just back and forth. I think Grady actually took the lead there in the third quarter. What was the key turning point there in the second half that helped your Cowboys prevail and come home with the golden football? Well, you know, there's a, there's a kickoff that we really felt was huge. They'd scored, kind of retaking the lead. And, and uh, you know, there for a little while we were going back and forth. And they kicked it off. And they kicked it off to one of our freshmen, uh, Carson Bryan. And, uh, you know, Carson's pretty dangerous, you know, out there. And, uh, you know, he returned one against the Duke of the week before. He said he's one of our outbacks in our kick return. And he'd returned one the week before against uh, against uh, the Duke. And uh, he was able to weave through there and found him a crease, and he hit it and went and scored a touchdown. It was big. I believe we had the PAT right after that, you know, and kind of give us a little extra cushion, you know. I mean, it was – right there and then you know we had another kid you know step up make plays you know it was all what it was all about you know just kids making plays in a tough environment coach i'm glad you brought up that paducah game because that just triggered something i've been wanting to ask you that by district matchup against paducah final score 108 to 91 how does that even happen in basketball sometimes what's it like to coach a game like that oh it's uh gut-wrenching (laughs) <laughs> you know, I mean, I've never been in a game like that as a player or a, or a coach before, and I don't ever want to be in a game like that ever again. The thing is, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just the, the pressure on you to no man. You know, the Duke's offense is rolling good. Our offense is rolling good. You know, we knew, man, we, we had to score every time we touched the ball. You, you know, got the ball and. uh I don't want any part of that anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, because this coming up weekend, uh, the quarterfinal matchup is going to be taking place in Amarillo, and, and you're going to be taking on Valley. Let's talk a little bit about the Patriots, what you've seen from them, and, and I believe you played them earlier on in the season. Is that correct? We, we did. We played them week one. Uh, you know, they've lost, they've, they've lost Catch Smith since then, but, you know, when you watch them, man, you know, they struggled there in the midseason and had to shuffle some kids around. Coach Dollar, man, you know, he's been doing this for a long time, and, you know, he's a good football coach and knew that, you know, they're going to struggle a little bit, but they're going to find their way. And they're starting to find their way. I think they're starting to peak at the right time. And they're, uh, you know, I think, to me, watching them, you know, and having, you know, been around six men my entire life and then got to watch Valley play a little bit, you know, it's got a more traditional Valley, you know, they line up and and, and just run their, their smash mouth game right down the middle and they got some big strong backs back there that could that, that are great for it, you know. What's going to be your keys and, to victory against Valley next weekend? You know, number one key is we've got to stop the run. You know, well, we've got to do a better job stopping around. We've been preaching that to the kids, you know. Quit thinking so much, you know, be aggressive. Be aggressive. Go out there and play hard. And just play like your your hair is on fire. And, and uh, you know, just play hard, man. You know, it's all on the line. It's all on the line. And, you know, Valley's going to do the same. And, you know, but the key is to win the game, man. We just, you know, keep doing what we're doing on offense. And let's, let's stop the run. You know. Coach, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy day. It's Thanksgiving week. You had the uh, short week because you had the game on Monday, and now you got to prepare for all that. I know you're a busy man.
Thank you very much. Good luck to you in the playoffs, and I hope you have a happy Thanksgiving. All right, man. Appreciate it. Welcome back to Just Six, a six-man radio network production. I'm now joined with someone who is starting to get tradition built in the six-man ranks. I'm joined by Savoy head coach, Coach Wilson. Coach Wilson, first of all, thanks for coming on the show. And Savoy Cardinals are just a team that nobody knew about, but they're starting to know now. Well, I want to first thank, thank you for having me. Uh, it's been a, it's been a wild and crazy ride, uh, you know, being an 11-man team and struggling to sustain an 11-man program, not having the numbers wise and dropping the six-man. It's been a pretty crazy ride, and uh, we uh, we got a good start. Things uh, I actually got to sit down with uh, uh, Mike Reed from Throckmorton, and uh, he taught me a lot of six-man football in about an hour's time. And so, uh, so we've got a lot of help from some different guys that you know in the six-man community that uh, you know help people learn and just they spread the knowledge of the six-man world, and that's been awesome so far. That's right. You got a good starting point with that Throckmorton program, back-to-back championships over, you know, two years ago, starting two years ago. Coach, yeah. let's talk a little more about uh, the jump to six-man. I mean, we're, I talked to your athletic director just a, a few moments ago, and at first, they weren't really, you guys were really too happy about making a move, but once you got into it and started winning, and now it's got a whole different outlook on it, don't you? Yeah, well, they had tried six-man in Savoy several years back after the 11-man program was having trouble with numbers again. And so they weren't too key on trying it again. And uh, we've got a group of young coaches there. Everybody on my staff graduated from Savoy, and we didn't want to see football fail again. And so uh, they gave us another shot at it, and we, we stuck with it, and we've, we've been learning. And, and you know, it's come, out for, it's come out for the better for our program so far and for our town. I mean, we didn't have to cash the football program in again, and we're having some success, and our kids are really enjoying it. And, you couldn't ask for a better way, you know. Coach, let's talk a, a little bit about your team. Uh, this is a, a fairly new uh, network, and it's a fairly new program. So a lot of our listeners really don't know too much about Six Man. So just kind of introduce your team to us. Uh, let us know exactly what your team's about and, and pretty much how what you run. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you know, without giving too much away, of course. <laughs> I'm still kind of learning this Six Man gig, too. And, uh, you know, uh, we're – I base it off uh, simple 11-man tactics, you know, it's blocking, tackling, and running the football and taking care of it. I mean, that's what I do. I can, I'm a big uh, clock controller. I like to be able to control the clock, and, you know, I kind of choose our own destiny for us. If we have to pass the football, we pass the football a little bit. But if not, I'm just going to ground and pound it, and I'm going to say, stop me if you can, and, you know, that's pretty much what we're going to do. And you made some uh, raised some eyebrows, especially this year, I believe last weekend uh, you guys were were not picked to win by the quote unquote experts, and you just pretty much shocked the six man world last weekend. Let's talk about that game. Well, you know, uh, those guys come out and they got after us last year, and we had something to prove. And I, I sat down with all my seniors before uh, two of they started, and I just asked them what they wanted out of their senior year, and they come up with the common goal that they wanted to make it back to playoffs and. Ultimately, they wanted another shot at those guys, so uh, they got what they wanted. You know, they achieved their goal throughout the season, kept getting better, and, you know, uh, they come hungry last weekend, even though it was colder and all heck, but they got after it, and they won a football game, so. Let's talk about your know, upcoming – oh, sorry about that, Coach. Let's talk about uh, this upcoming uh, matchup this weekend. Uh, let everybody know who you guys play and, and how you match up with them. Uh, we're playing the May Tigers, you know, <laughs> dropping to the six-man world. I don't know a whole lot about all the teams, you know, just some of the perennial powerhouses, but I got to, I got to sit down with Coach Steele and talk to him for a little bit, and uh, we traded films, obviously, and got to watch those guys. And, you know, to be honest with you, they're a lot like we are. Uh, they run the football a lot. They're big and physical, and, you know, they control the clock just like we do, they don't, and they only have to pass when they want to. So, you know, it's, it's going to be a pretty even matchup between those guys, and, you know, the better team that gets a few key stops and uh, can put the ball in the end zone and take care of it and doesn't turn it over will be the team who wins. Coach, we want to thank you for taking time out of your busy day to uh, come on the show. We want to wish you the best of luck throughout the playoffs. And welcome to Six Man Football, and we hope you, you keep building on this new tradition that you guys have found. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. And y'all have a good Thanksgiving.
Thank you, sir. You too. Have a happy Thanksgiving. When we come back, we're going to be joined by the coach of the Mini Tigers, Coach Steele, right after this on the Six Man Radio Network. Welcome back to Just Six. Jeff Green here with you on the Six Man Radio Network. Now I'm joined by the May Tigers head coach. And, man, they have been roaring through the season, through the playoffs, undefeated season so far. Coach Steele, welcome to the show. And let's talk about this year's May Tigers. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, it's been a great year so far. Um, uh, one of those years that, you know, I'll look back on at some point and, and wish you had those times back. Uh, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. Now, there's a uh, word on the street, this coach, that you got a pretty fast uh, team there and made a lot of speed on the field. And let's talk about that high power and offense you had. Well, I wouldn't call us a, a, a real real fast team. We have, we have pretty average speed up and down the line. When I say average, we have good enough speed to get the job done. We don't have anybody that's a a four, five, four, six points a guy, but we got a lot of kids that are, that are pretty fast and understand what's going on out there. Coach, last week you had a great uh, playoff battle in the D1 ranks. Let's talk about that. Let's go ahead and recap that game for the listeners. Yeah, that was a that was a great game. It was a, it was a cold night, good football weather. Um, Blum is a is a very good team. Uh, uh, they're different from us. They they like to spread the ball out and throw it, and run a lot of spread. Whereas we're more of a tight team and and try to grind out yards and, uh, and keep the chains moving. So it was a it was a clash of two different philosophies offensively. And uh, unfortunately for us, I think, especially in cold weather, our philosophy worked out better. This weekend coming up, you have the Savoy Cardinals. Let's talk a little bit about Savoy and, and what they bring to the game and how you guys match up with them. Well, I think, to be honest with you, we're, we're pretty similar. We run out of different formations, but we both look like we're trying to accomplish the same thing. We're both uh, ball control type teams. Um, I try to do a good job of blocking. They're, they're very big. Uh, they got a couple backs that can run the ball pretty well, and uh, and both teams don't throw it a whole lot. And so, I think it's a it's a this time you know last week was two different offensive philosophies. This week appears to be uh, two philosophies that are very similar. So I, I figure the team that executes that philosophy better will, will come out on top. Let's go ahead and talk about the season overall as a whole from week zero up to now, what have you seen, uh, any transitions in the team, and how this team has come together as the weeks have has gone on? Let's talk a little bit about that. This is the best locker room we've ever had as far as kids uh, uh, pulling for each other. And uh, we don't have any major egos. We don't have any players that are uh, completely outstanding that you can just key on the one kid and stop us. We, uh, we rotate through running backs. We rotate through linemen. Um, about the one top is our quarterback, he uh, – he took, probably plays about every snap on offense. But other than that, we uh, we really take kids through. So we have a great mix of speed and power in our run game. And uh, it's just a great group of kids to work with. They, they work out hard. They play room hard. They practice hard. And then they play hard. And it's uh, it's just been a fun season. You know, the May Packers, they have been a team that have been, uh, you know, traditionally good in, in six-man football. They, they've made strong playoff runs, it seems like, almost every year. What's going on in May, Texas, Coach? I just got a good group of kids. It's a it's a great community. Um, my wife and I love it here. We hope to raise our kids here. It's the only home they've ever known. It's my tenth year in May, and I I couldn't be happier with the community and with the school system and the type of kids that come through this school system. So we're real happy. Coach Steele, best of luck to you on the, this weekend and the rest of the season. We thank you for coming on with us and and taking time out of your busy day. We hope you have a happy Thanksgiving, Coach. Same to you. Thank you very much. And we'll go back to Just Six. This is Jeff Green with the Six Man Radio Network. I am joined right now. We've had a lot of tradition on the phone today, and we have some more traditions on the line with us right now. Coach Helms from the Grand Falls Royalty Cowboys. Coach Helms, welcome to the show. And, and just, you know, people know there's been a lot of firsts today. This is the first show. Uh, the network kicked off this week. And as a matter of fact, the Grand Falls Royalty Cowboys is our first team that we actually uh, signed on and, and have been following through the playoffs. The team that that uh, that you have put together in Grand Falls now this be their fourth straight uh, playoff appearance. What is it about this group of guys that they just continue to win? Well, they're they're committed to 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 playing football. You know, there's a love of football there. Uh, you've got kids that are year round. You know, that that's kind of what they live for. Uh, our off season is very intense. Uh, track season is very intense. They're they're a competitive group of kids and. You know, traditionally, Grand Falls has always kind of been hard-nosed kids, and and uh, these kids have taken it a little bit, a little bit further. You know, and, and really put that commitment into 
into work and making successful football season. That's right. I mean, last year it was another first, the first time that this group of guys actually made it to a semifinal appearance in the in the playoffs last year. We've been talking, you know, throughout the, the postseason, and the, the lone loss to Grand Falls came back in week zero to Water Valley. And you said that the, the team has uh, kind of uh, looked back on that and they don't want to experience that feeling again. Let's talk about how the team has grown since that week zero loss and, and how they've just gotten better and better every week. Well, I, I think that, that any time you play a really good opponent week zero, you know, it can present some problems. Uh, I think physically we were there. You know, it wasn't a lack of conditioning. It wasn't a lack of want to. You know, the kids played till the end. Um, I think offensively we've made great strides since then. You know, and we've kind of made that a conscious effort to, and, and and not to just rely on our athletic ability as much, but to, to really work with the scheme. And you know, I think our blocking is, is uh, tremendously impressed since then. And this week you're going to face uh, the Lorraine Bulldogs. Now, what have you seen of anything from Lorraine, and and what is what is their ball club about? Well, they, they've got good overall team speed. Um, you know, they've got a they've got a sophomore spread back that's really stepped up for them this year. Um, Tillis, I believe is his name, uh, solid running back, throws the ball pretty well. Um, they've got their kind of their tradition too that the kids that have played for the last you know three and four years for them quite a bit. Uh, Garza kid is been a spread back in the past he's kind of using him in other ways now and kind of opens up their offense a little bit and uh, uh the Cantu kid you know probably as good a football player as I've seen uh he's a solid kid probably about six foot 200 pounds moves well uh, to me probably their best overall kid um defensively offensively everything they've got going what would you say your the big factor is with your defense because your defense has not given up many points. In fact, through 10 games, I believe it was only 56 points for the whole regular season. What's the key factor? What's what's a big uh, contributor to that? Well, I think we're very aggressive. You know, I, I think with the, within the scheme that we run, we want to be, you know, we want to fly to the ball. Uh, we work a lot on, on open field tackling. We work a lot on uh, if you see someone about to make a tackle, that's not assured. You know, we, we want all six kids there to the ball. Uh, you know, we, we work a number of different packages. We're, we're primarily a zone coverage type team. Uh, we want you to complete things underneath, and, and then we fly to the ball. You know, and, and we've gotten a lot of turnovers that way. We've, you know, uh, really, I, I guess as much as anything, it, defensive to me is kind of like uh, blocking. You know, you've got to want to do it. it. It's the things that, you know, you don't get a lot of glory a lot of times, uh, but it can sure change the momentum of the game. You know, and pe- people that, that face us, you know, whether win or lose, they're, they're going to know that we were there. You know, as far as you want a presence on defense, you, you kind of want that uh, uh, intimidation factor where, where they know that in any moment we we are going to strike you. And, and we try to, you know, we preach physicalness, we preach uh you know, all six flying to the ball at all times. Coach, good luck to you throughout the playoffs. We're going to be covering you every step of the way, and uh, we'll give you a holler after this weekend game. All right, thank you. Welcome back to Just Six, brought to you by the Six Man Radio Network. Jeff Korean here, and now I am joined. We've been talking about tradition and winning programs so far in the show. Let's bring along a guy who has hoisted the uh, the biggest trophy of them all at the end of the season a couple times over the last few years. Coach of the Strong Greyhounds, Coach the Wayne Lee. Coach Lee, thank you very much for coming on the show with us. Thanks for having me. Hey, Coach, last week you guys got a 52-6 to win uh, against Jayton. Let's recap that game real quick and uh, move on, talk about the, your upcoming game against Newcastle. Yeah, you know, um, Jayton's got a young team. They're well coached. Coach Cameron does a really really good job with those guys. Um, um, we, we came out, you know, pretty strong early. It was, you know, the weather – for both teams, and I was really pleased with our kids, you know, um, back into the weather and, and, and didn't let it, you know, bother them. And they, they got after Jayton, and, and, you know, Jayton has a really good bond. We, you know, we were very pleased with what we played. That's right. You mentioned the weather, and all of D2 schools actually this last week moved their games ahead to Thursday so they could avoid that weather. And, and we just now know that, you know, some teams in D1 are if it's not Monday. Was that uh, – a pretty hard decision to make, or was that a you know a safety issue all the way? And let's go ahead and move the game up a day. 
You know, we were playing on Friday. We, we thought we'd move it up a day just because of, you know, the safety. But, you know, regardless, you know, I think we would have played on Friday. We would have had a hard time moving to Monday just because, you know, I think it just, you know, throws the schedule off really bad. But I understand the conditions and the safety of, of, of the travel and, and the kids. But we were very fortunate to have the weather that allowed us to play. That's right. Coach, let's tell the listeners a little bit about uh, your football team. A lot of people who are, are listening in – we really don't know too much about the six-man football, so if you would, introduce your team to us and, and let us know, you know, pretty much what the strong Greyhounds are all about this year. You know, we got a, um, we got one senior this year. You know, most of these guys have been starting as a freshman and sophomore. We get, we're, we got, you know, a far few juniors starting. You know, a couple of sophomores that's um, really contributing, you know. Um, a couple of our best players are actually sophomores. And we have um, Colton King and Allison, Ross Allison, you know, and our quarterback is Harrison Novak. And, you know, those guys are doing a really good job. We've got a really good receiver named Abram Jarmillo. So, you know, we, we're we're excited about this year. Our kids are doing a really good job. Um, so I, I feel like, you know, we've got a well-balanced team. We throw the ball and run them probably about 60-40. So that's, that's been really something good for us this year. Is there any uh, traits or qualities you see out of this team that you've seen in past teams, the ones that have, have – uh, won some state titles. You know what? There, there's some things, that, you know, I, I think, you know, the tradition we have in strong, it's my 11th year strong, and um, there's some very similarities to those teams. You know, they are um, they understand what it takes. Last year we got beat, off, beat out in the semifinals, and, and most, you know, everyone, these kids, you know, coming back pretty much. We had, you know, we had three seniors last year that graduated, so a lot of these kids played in that game, so. Yeah, they most definitely understand what it takes to get there, and, and, and they, they understand the tradition. It's very similar. Well, let's look ahead to this weekend. You're going to face the Newcastle Bobcats. What have you seen from this team that Newcastle brings to the table, and, and how do you guys match up with them? You know, we played Newcastle early in the year, and um, we were fortunate to beat them, but, you know, that doesn't mean nothing in our game. But um, Newcastle's got a really good coach. He's been there for 20 something years. The only co- His name's Todd Spencer. That's the only job he's ever had. And um, this is actually his last year. He's going to be the superintendent. So, you know, we got to withstand their, you know, win one for the Gipper, you know. I know they're going to be really far up for him. And I know we got to, you know, kind of fight through that, that initial dream um, from them. And, you know, I know they're going to play hard and play tough. they got a, they got a really good quarterback, a solid, a solid line. He does a great job on defense. They, they're very well coached. So that's something that, you know, we gotta we got to just kind of withstand their, their – charge the first quarter, you know. Let's shift gears a little bit. I'm, this has been a problem for some districts and uh, some schools, in, in especially Division Two, like uh, Lone and Pat Creek, we're having some numbers issues. How's the, the numbers looking in the, in the strong school system? Are, are they going to be good over the next couple of years as far as enough kids to fill the team? Oh, yeah. You know, um, we don't have that many high school. You know, there's probably more than we have in the past. But, but the, the key is we have a lot of boys, but no, nah, I don't ever see it being an issue when we drop down. You know, we have 20, about 22 kids playing out for football this year. You know, we average between 15 and probably 25 every year. So that, I think our numbers are pretty strong. That's good. Coach, thank you for taking time out of your busy day. I know you're getting ready for this weekend. Good luck to you and this weekend and the rest of the playoffs, and uh, we'll catch up with you next week to, to recap this weekend. Welcome back to Just Six, part of the Six Man Radio Network. I'm Jeff Korea, and I'm joined right now by the Crow Wildcats head coach, Coach Hayes. Coach Hayes, welcome to the show. And, man, last week was one of those hard-fought, punch-for-punch games that six-man football is all about when you faced off with Water Valley. Let's recap that game real quick. Oh, yes, sir. Really, really good game. You know, we got down early. Um, I don't know, twenty four to six or twenty four to twelve or thirty two something. We got down quite a few two or three scores. Now the kids battled back and fought back through it though. Yes, sir. And there was a turning point in that game there to start off the second half. Why don't you tell everybody about that? It really was. They they got an onside kick thrown in the nine on us and uh, I guess after halftime they were gonna do another onside kick and uh luckily for us it hit our kid and bounced into our tailback, our our lead guy and he took it to the house. Uh, and he, 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 the threat for us, we just don't use him a lot, but uh, he got a lot of speed, and it happened to land in his hand, and he took it all away. And one another huge factor in this game, I know a final score of 52 to 46, people might think that I'm crazy when I say this, but the defense really 
step up and cause turnovers, especially in the red zone whenever Water Valley was going in to score. Let's talk about your defense. Our defense did a great job. You know, we, we gave up only two scores the whole second half of the ball game. And uh, we felt like that was the difference in the ball game, especially in the fourth quarter. Uh, we held them four straight times in a row without getting the end zone. Uh, and one of those, I think twice, uh, there were goal line stops that we held them. And, you know, that was, that was the difference in the ball game. Our defense really stood, stepped up and started reading their keys and doing some good things. Weekend, you guys are going to face off against Ira in the, in the quarterfinals for Division One and Six Man. Let's talk about that matchup and what have you seen from Ira and how do you guys match up with him? Ira's a really good football team. They, they, they're really strength. They're running into the football. They can throw it when they want to. They just, they just don't have to. They, they, they do a good job of blocking, good job of running with the, what they do. Uh, the matchup, uh, I, I don't know if we're going to match them you know, uh, quite as good. They, they, they run it really well. Uh, our kids are kids speed wise, team speed. I guess we do match up good. Uh, it's going about the same on team speed. Uh, it's going to be who can stop who, I guess, who, who can who can execute and make the least amount of mistakes. Coach, we want to wish you the best of luck throughout the rest of the playoffs, and uh, we'll be following you, and we will have you back on next week. All right. Thank you, sir. Well, we want to thank you, our listeners, for tuning in tonight to Just Six, our first production on the Six Man Radio Network. We hope to see you next week. Hey, Coach, I really appreciate it. He already hung up. Okay. Hey, uh, Coach Keith from Happy just uh, 